the governor. I am. I heard you on NPR the other day. Yes. Very impressive. Thank you. Very impressive, and we are delighted to have you this evening. Well, Pat, thank you. It, it's, it's great to be with you. Uh, when I look around the room as folks started filing in, there's a lot of familiar faces. So this is a good room. I don't know what the next room is going to be like, but you take one room at a time in this business. So thank you. Uh, I am Kevin Lembo. I'm the state health care advocate. Um, and that puts me in a pretty privileged position, and that is standing with patients and their families when their insurance company says no. Happens a lot. Happens more than it should. 2,600 cases last year, $6.7 million in consumer savings, $20 million since I've been the healthcare advocate. It's an issue that Connecticut identified early, put a government entity in place to represent people's interests in that interaction with their insurance company. And thanks to your state government, we've got a small, lean agency that produces results like that. I think the rest of the government can do more to produce results for the people of the state. So I want to answer one question that often comes up. And the answer to the question is, yes, you can run for lieutenant governor. Let's <laughs> just set it aside. Yes, you can run for lieutenant governor. You know, the lieutenant governor stands alone at the convention. For those who've been at convention, you know, it's a separate vote. You stand alone in the primary. And it's only after the primary that you get joined to a gubernatorial candidate and run as a team. I think that tells us that our law envisions a process. Now we're going to think for a minute about who that person is that we're going to put in second position. Because you know, sometimes lieutenant governors become governors. Sometimes you know, governors who aren't prepared to be governor. And sometimes, after six years of being the governor, they're still not prepared to be the governor. Okay. Uh, so, um, I'm hoping we can have a dialogue uh, across the state, and we began it in November uh, of last year, about what we need in that number two. Um, it's not my goal to be the shotgun spouse of the next gubernatorial candidate, but rather to make the case that I bring a skill set uh, to the new Democratic administration led by our new Democratic governor, whoever that may be, that will help us move Connecticut from where we are now to the place where we need to be, or the place we should have been, uh, over the last 16, 20, 24 years, depending on how you want to count. Before I was the healthcare advocate, I was an assistant comptroller under Nancy Wyman. Uh, when I worked with Nancy, I learned an awful lot about the budget. Uh, how to read the back of the budget first, because that's where all the interesting stuff is that nobody really wants you to read. Um, I learned about the importance of filling up the rainy day fund when you've got the money so you can spend it when you don't. Learned about generally accepted accounting principles that make my head hurt. And learned two other things. Um, and they're about Connecticut politics, or politics in general. That two things matter, loyalty and your word. Because at the end of the day, that's all we've got. I think I've been successful in the work that I've done in Connecticut because I try to keep my word every day. I try to return calls when people call. I try to build an agency on your behalf that responds to need, that responds in real time, that is with you, no questions, we're there in your corner. And something we do that's unusual, and that is when we're done helping, we ask you, how did it go? Was your interaction what you expected? Did you learn something? Were you happy with the outcome? When's the last time DMV asked you, how did it go? <laughs> you know, it just doesn't happen. And it's become sort of a joke, you know, that government agencies don't respond to people, but it's part of the reason people feel so disconnected from the government, because government isn't responding to the needs of people. We're not keeping pace. We're not demonstrating that we can do this government thing efficiently in a way that takes that tax dollar and, and treats it with the seriousness of that stewardship relationship that we have with the taxpayer's money. So traveling around the state, talking about this office, hoping to get folks talking about who the lieutenant governor is going to be before we get a week or so out from the convention and somebody pulls Louie out of the fourth row and says, I'm the gubernatorial candidate, that's Louie, Louie, come on up, Louie's my lieutenant governor. That's a problem. We've done it that way before. Yeah. The lieutenant governor can't, in my view, and yes, I've got a dog in this fight, the lieutenant governor can't just be a demographic match. It can't be a geographic, solely, decision. It's gotta be about what is the skill set of the governor, what is the skill set that they need to bring very close to them to get the job done? The next governor of Connecticut is going to need to be a visionary. They're going to need to inspire us to follow them in a new direction. They're going to have to be a technical person in the weeds, working on reorganizing government and all that nitty gritty stuff. That's not pretty, but it's important. And third, they're going to have to be a hard knuckle political fighter. 
because just because you match a democratic governor to the democratic legislature doesn't mean things are going to go smoothly. We've seen that in Washington. So if they need to be all three of those things, it's unusual to find all three of those things in one person. And I think I bring some of that skill uh, to this decision. So it's my job from now to the convention to travel around the state, talk to town committees, and try to pigeonhole Democrats and corner them and ask for their vote. Uh, we are well on our way. Uh, I can comfortably say that we will have uh, enough delegates to be on the ballot in the August primary. And now it's my job to make sure that we have enough that it becomes a question, well, why not him versus why? So Living Guilford, uh, three amazing kids, uh, two on the autism spectrum. Um, it's been an interesting ride. It's not the life I thought it was going to be, but it's been an interesting ride. Lifelong Democrat, mom's an OPEIU retiree, stuffed envelopes as, at the table as a kid. Um, so uh, I'm new to the run. I'm new to be the can new being the candidate, but I run risks, and I know what wins, and I know what doesn't win. And I run government agencies, and I know what works, and I know what doesn't work. So I think we're at a time in our history where we can't just take a flyer on this one. We've got to make sure we put someone in with the skills necessary.